All right, so here's question number six. Let's see what it says. So particle P of mass M is held in equilibrium on a fixed rough inclined plane by a light inextensible string. All right, the plane is inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal where alpha is less than 45 degrees. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. The string is inclined to the plane at an angle alpha shown in the figure three. Okay, the string lies in a vertical plane that contains a line of greater slope of the inclined plane. When the tension in the string is 0 0.75 mg, P is on the point of moving up the plane. Okay, so it's not moving up, but it's on the point of moving up the plane. Okay, and if it's on the point of moving up the plane, what do we have to do? What do we do with friction? We'll talk about that in a minute. Find an expression for the magnitude of the frictional force acting on P, giving an answer in terms of m, g, and alpha. Okay, so here I have uh, a picture of uh, figure three. Now, since it's on the point of moving up the plane, this is what I like to do. So I like to use double arrows to show the direction in which the object is moving or about to move. And if the object is moving in one direction, that means the friction will obviously act in the opposite direction. So that means the frictional force will act in this direction. Now, another thing that we have to do is, according to the question, the tension in this string is 0 0.75 mg. Okay, so let's break this down into horizontal and vertical components. So by horizontal and vertical, I mean per parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So this is parallel to the plane. This would be 0 0.75 mg cos alpha. This would be 0 0.75 mg sine alpha. Okay, use these arrows to show the direction in which they are acting. And this is obviously 90 degrees. Then let's break down the weight. So the weight acting downwards would be mg, of course. Then this is the component which is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, and this is the component, actually, let me just draw it. Yeah, so this is the component which is perpendicular to the plane, and this is the component which is parallel to the plane. Obviously not drawn to scale. Let me try and make it as accurate as possible, however. There we go. Now, it doesn't seem like it, but these two will be parallel, and these two will also be parallel. Why? Because th these two are parallel to the plane, Okay, so they'll be parallel to one another. These two are perpendicular to the plane. So these two will be parallel to one another as well. Okay, now the weight, as we know, always acts downwards. So this will act downwards and this will be acting down the plane. This would be equal to mg and do bear in mind that this angle will be alpha. So this would be equal to mg sine alpha and this would be equal to mg cos alpha. Now, once you've done all this, uh, well, once you've marked all the forces from that point onwards, it's all downhill. All you have to do is just calculate the relevant forces and use them accordingly. And also do not forget the normal reaction force acting in this direction. Okay, so the question says, find an expression for the magnitude of the friction force. So first of all, F net is equal to mass times acceleration. That means all the forces that are acting up the plane minus all the forces that are acting down the plane will be equal to mass times acceleration. Okay. So what are the forces that are acting up the plane? 0 0.75 mg cos theta. That's the uh, cos alpha, sorry. I, I think I've said theta earlier also. By theta, I meant alpha. Minus all the forces that are acting in the opposite direction. So one is obviously its weight component, which would be mg sine alpha, and then the frictional force. Okay, and what's this equal to? This is equal to mass times acceleration, which is equal to zero. Why? Because it's not accelerating, it's about to move, but it hasn't moved yet. So that means it's in it's it's uh, in equilibrium. Okay, so keep your eyes on the prize. We're supposed to find out the frictional force. So let's make the frictional force the subject. So you have 0 0.75 mg cos alpha minus mg sine alpha minus the frictional force equals to zero. So all I have to do is move the frictional force across the equals to sign. So frictional force is equals to 0 0.75 mg cos alpha minus mg sine alpha, and that's it. This is the frictional force that the question wanted us to find in the first part, and that's the end of the first part. Okay. The next part says the coefficient of friction between P and the plane is half, so we're given the value of mu, and we're supposed to show that tan alpha is equals to 2.5. Okay, so let's continue part B over here. Now, there's very good reason why the question made us find out the friction force because we are going to use it in this part. Why? Because what's friction force equal to? Friction force is equals to mu times r. Okay, so friction force 
is equal to mu times r. So mu times r is equals to 0 0.75 mg cos alpha minus mg sine alpha. Now as far as mu is concerned, that's equal to half. The question is, what is r? Well, for r, here's what we have to do. So since it's in equilibrium, that means all the forces that are acting up the plane, okay, perpendicular to the plane, will be equal to all the forces that are acting perpendicularly down the plane. So that means r plus 0 0.75 mg sine alpha is equals to mg cos alpha. Okay, so these two forces acting in one direction and this force acting in the opposite direction. So let's find out, let's form an equation for r. So r plus 0 0.75 mg sine alpha, 0 0.75 mg sine alpha is equal to mg cos alpha, mg cos alpha. Yeah, now let's make r the subject. So r is equals to mg cos alpha minus 0 0.75 mg sine alpha. How many marks is this question? This is a six mark question. Yep, makes total sense. Okay, so now we have r. Let's replace it. So half mg cos alpha minus 0 0.75 mg sine alpha is equal to, now let's save time by just copy pasting this right here as it is. And let's move this here. Oops. Okay, now eyes on the prize, we're supposed to show that tan alpha is equals to 2.5. So if somehow we can get sine alpha upon cos alpha, we can use the identity and turn it into tan alpha. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cross multiply. So zero point, uh, this will be mg, in fact, let's just copy paste to save some time. So this remains as is, okay. And two gets multiplied by 0 0.75 mg cos alpha and mg sine alpha. So that now becomes 1.5 mg cos alpha minus 2 mg sine alpha. Okay, now let's get all the sines and the cos on one side. So if I move this here, this would be 0 0.75 plus 2. So that would be 1.25 mg sine alpha is equals to 1.5 mg cos alpha minus mg cos alpha, that would be equal to 0 0.5 mg cos alpha. So we cross out the mg from both sides and now we have sine alpha upon cos alpha to be equal to 0 0.5 over 1.25. Now if you work out 0 0.5 over 1.25, that's equal to 2 upon 5, okay? And what sine alpha upon cos alpha equal to? That's equal to tan alpha. And there you go. This is what we were supposed to do in part B. Yep, that's it. So that's the end of part B. Now part C. Part C says the string breaks. Okay. So what do we do when the string breaks? Let's find out. Determine whether P remains at rest. You must justify your reasoning. So if the string breaks, that means if P was to move, it would move downwards. Okay. If P were to move, it would move down the plane, obviously, because now this string is no longer there. Okay, and if it's moving downwards, that means the frictional force will be acting in this direction. Okay, and all this remains as is. This is the weight acting downwards, mg, this is alpha, this would be mg sine alpha, and this would be mg cos alpha. Now, how do we decide whether the object is going to move or not? The way to figure that out, okay, also don't forget the normal reaction force acting in this direction perpendicular to the plane. If the frictional force is the maximum frictional force greater than the force due to which the object will move down the plane, if it does, that is basically mg sine theta, uh, sine alpha, okay. If this is the case, okay, that means the object the object will not move, okay? If that is the case. All right, now let's see what we can do here. Let's calculate the frictional force, okay? And we will compare that with the 
force that is acting down the plane. Okay, so how will I calculate the frictional force? The frictional force will be equal to mu times r. Okay, and what's r going to be equal to? r would be equal to simply mg cos alpha. Okay, r is equal to mg cos alpha. Now, a good idea would be that since we have tan alpha, okay, let's find out sine alpha and cos alpha. So, tan alpha is equal to 2 upon 5. That means we're looking at a triangle where the opposite side is 2 and the adjacent side is 5. Obviously, not drawn to scale. It's just a hideous triangle. So opposite and 5, this is alpha. So this would be equal to 25 plus 4, that's equal to 29. That means sine alpha would be equal to opposite over hypotenuse of 2 upon root 29. So we're going to be needing that. And cos alpha would be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse of 5 upon root 29. And we're definitely going to be needing that also. So the frictional force is equal to half times r and what's r is equals to r is equals to mg cos alpha and what's cos alpha is equal to cos alpha is equals to 5 upon root 29 okay so we're going to keep this as is uh, in fact let's let's simplify it a little so 1 upon in fact 5 upon 5 upon 2 root 29 mg this is the frictional force the maximum frictional force okay now let's talk about the force due to which if this particle moves it will move down the plane that would be mg sine theta uh, sine alpha sorry i keep saying theta so mg sine alpha what sine alpha is equals to sine alpha is equals to 2 upon under root 29 okay so that means this can be written as 2 mg upon under root 29 okay now we have to see if, okay, we have to see, we have to see if 5 upon 2 under root 29 mg is greater than 2 upon root 29 mg. Now they both have mg, we, that means we can simply cross them out. And we can see that yes, 5 upon, okay, you can use your calculator or you can just you know, use your common sense that 5 upon 2 root 29 will obviously be greater than 2 upon root 29. Okay, since that's the case, that's the case, okay, that means the object will not move. Okay, so since the frictional force is greater than the force acting down the plane, okay, to make sure that you're very clear with your reasoning, the object will not move. And there you go. That's the answer. Okay. So this is what we were supposed to do. We were supposed to show whether the object moves or not. And we can see that the object does not move. And that's the end of question number six. Now let's have a look at question number seven and see what it says.